All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I know we have a we have a busy day. We have people in here and people are on schedules. Um, I apologize. Uh, we're not going to have a quorum right now, but we are going to go ahead and get started. It is because it's sort of an, an odd addition. Uh, um, us having another finance meeting this month, and as you see on the on the agenda, uh, outside the minutes, we're just going through the rest of non personnel. And I imagine that's business and operations and academics. I think in my mind uh, is correct. Um, so I do want to thank everyone for coming in. Um, and real briefly, just to kind of get this out of the way, next month we're going to be going over some capital budgets that our team, Maurice, and staff have been working really hard on, and looking forward to that. And then. Uh, June, we're probably just going to have a regular monthly meeting. I know our internal team is going to be looking at personnel budgets and things like that, what sort of things, what, what, what the pitfalls with that, what are things we need to be aware of, um, and that way we can start looking at that next year. Um, but I do want to kind of, maybe at some point we can send out an email to maybe the, the, the committee and just kind of, you know, kind of things that we've seen during this budget process, what things went smooth, what things you, you know, do you think may need to be tweaked or something like that. But this year really sets us, uh, uh, allows us to really um, look at next year. Um, you know, I know, you know, next month we're going over these capital budgets and we were talking to our internal team um, last week uh, on what that would look like, you know, on a regular year. When, when do we do the non-personnel, uh, the future personnel, and when do we do the capital budgets? Um, and what sort of cadence should we have every year of that? Uh, understanding that there are different time frames for everything. So that's something that I'm looking forward to, to seeing sort of develop and, you know, for next year to have, uh, um, you know, we're, we're basically always budgeting. Hey, welcome. And we're one more short, we'll have a quorum, but we're getting there. Um, but I do want to thank everyone for their patience and their input uh, and their time and our staff that have been working really hard in all of this, uh, this, this whole year. And it seems like that's all we do is budget. But you know that, that's what we do. Let's be budget all year round. So with that, I'm going to hand it right over to staff uh, to get started then on the rest of the non-personnel uh, budget presentations, and then after that, maybe a few remarks, and then we'll be done for the day. And that's it. And then we'll have another meeting to go over the. When is that again, Mr. Borg? I forget. It will be seven days from today. Excellent. Ten. See, Ten. just you know, okay. so you get to see my shining face shortly. <laughs> So thank you very much. With that, I'll pass it over. Okay. Um, we'll just kind of cadence for this, for this, this afternoon and evening. Um, we've got four different offices that will pre be presenting to finish this up. Obviously, these are the biggest pieces of what we do. Um, Alicia Gillison will present the academic services budget, followed by Maurice Oldham with business and operations. Dr. Michelle Klein will be presenting um, the Office of Accountability, and then Scott Varner will wrap up with the Office of Communications. So with that, I okay. will ask Alicia to come up and I'll advance these slides for you. I believe it's on um, page four for the committee. Um, yeah. So the things we've kind of talked about. In this packet right here, I'm not sure what yours looks yes. like. <laughs> this one? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, yes. Scott. I am well, so how are you? Doing well. All right. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share the Department of Academic Achievement Support Services appropriation request for the fiscal year 2019. Um, I want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to our department budget managers who spent a great deal of time reviewing current expenditures as well as feedback from the community forums that we had earlier in the year to identify over $2.7 million in cost savings for the district. In identifying these savings, um, we kept in mind the district goals, and those district goals over the next five years, we will provide five-star rated pre-K experiences for CCS uh, Columbus City Schools four-year-olds and we're going to ensure all students are highly prepared for kindergarten, ensure that all students are reading on grade level by the end of the third grade, and ensure that all students graduate from high school. And in doing all of this, we'll provide the necessary support services to limit impact of both academic and non-academic barriers to success. We'll start with our 907, which is student mentoring. 
and the OPU 907 supports the Office of Student Mentoring Initiatives. The reductions align the office's budget with the appropriations from fiscal year 2017. The reductions primarily fall within the areas of professional development for staff of the three that are in the office, as well as the day-to-day -day operational efficiencies. OPU 914 is Academic Services, and it's our department's operational budget. Reductions include professional development for myself and my senior executive director to my right, uh, David Baker, who I uh, failed to introduce, guess me, as well as efficiencies for the department's day-to-day -day operations. OPU 918 supports the work of our Office of Professional Learning and Licensure, and reductions include cost savings with a new software system for tracking professional development for state licensure, as well as reducing the outreach courses being offered for our teaching staff. OPU 922 supports the district's summer school program and reductions to this appropriation request align with operating costs such as supplies and materials, not for programming for our students. On a real quick, so that was a, maybe I don't know the background from 17 to 18 is quite a jump. Was it just sort of a shift or? It's a shift. Okay. Don't try. Save as okay. 914 in academic services. Yes. Okay. Right. From 934. Let's go back. We've, over the last couple of years, we've done a lot of shifting from one OBU to another to try to align to better expenses. Align. Okay. So uh, we had, um, especially in 914, because mm -hmm. we heard, in 914, yeah, mm -hmm. in 914 and FY17, that OBU didn't exist. Yeah. Um, we had everything aligned with school leadership. Okay. We split those out into two different OBUs. Okay. Think. Good to know. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. And we're at 930. Did you have a question? Did that answer your question? Yes, yeah. Thank you very All much, right. ma'am. And our OPU 930 supports the Office of Health, Family, and Community Services. Like the summer school request, this request contains reductions in the day-to-day -day operations expenses. Once again, nothing for the programming. We're not reducing any of the programming for our students. 931, if I know I can. And the OPU 931 supports I know I can programming in the districts. Again, you'll see a minor reduction in operating expenses uh, will be found in this appropriation. And didn't I know I can pick up some of what they share with us on a year-to-year -year basis based on some of our budget reductions? No, I know I can. You're thinking about um, city year. I know city I can do not. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Thank you. Nine thirty four school leadership development supports the offices of school leadership development and the reductions to this OPU are realized through our day to day operations and by sharing the cost of city year uh, programs like city year with the individual buildings that city year are supporting those buildings are picking up the cost or picking up 50% of the cost so that's where you see the reduction. Student activities, OPU 957 supports students' athletics and activities, and much of their budget is in programming, so there was minimal operation costs that they reduced. OPU 961 supports the district's PAR program, PAR is the acronym we use for peer assistance and review, and that is support for teachers, um, primarily new teachers or struggling teachers. Similar to the athletics budget, much of the PAR budget is programming, and so minimal cost to the operation and reductions as identified. Moving into the Office of Teaching and Learning. OPU 904 
supports the Office of Teaching and Learning, there is a significant reduction to this appropriation request. Mm -hmm. This reduction falls into two categories. First, several operational costs were reduced or eliminated from this OPU, including supplies, cost of bringing outside consultants for professional development and for training, mm -hmm. and reductions totaled in excess of $200,000. The second, dollars that were directly related to reading have shifted to a different OPU. So we're not eliminating that, we're just realigning as um, Senior Executive Director David mentioned before. So, and you'll see a significant increase once we get to that reading and that supports reading across the district. OPU 905 supports the operation of the division of K through 12 curriculum. We are reducing operational costs to this OPU by approximately $45,000 while realigning over $200,000 into the reading OPU. OPU 909 supports the district ESL program and is being incorporated into the Office of Teaching and Learning for next school year. Mm -hmm. So they're not a standalone. So you'll see minimal changes to this request demonstrating some reductions in the day-to-day -day operations, not in the programming for our ESL students. OPU 910, if you look here, is that significant jump that we mentioned before, and that's because of the realignment um, to this OP, OPU 910. It supports reading instruction across the district. Only 30,000 in operating efficiencies were identified for reduction in this OPU, as reading was maintained as a high priority for our district. Over 700,000 from other OPUs is being moved into this OPU so that all reading expenses can be aligned and tracked under one single OPU for FY19. OPU 912 supports our social studies instruction and reduction in this OPU fall under day-to-day -day operations and transportations for field trips. And I'll note, not all field trips will be eliminated, but they will be reduced. And then look at other fundings that buildings may have, uh, title fundings and some grant funding. OPU 919 supports math instruction across the district. Reductions include some reductions in professional conferences for our uh, math coordinators and day-to-day -day operations. And we're not eliminating professional development altogether. We're just looking for local opportunities for, for professional development. OPU 920 supports science instruction across the district and reductions include the elimination of the district-wide fifth grade experience at COSI, as well as various one-time purchases of materials and equipment that were not necessarily for this upcoming school year. So we're in conversation right now with COSI about other opportunities our students can have. That was gonna be my question, actually, yes. uh, what their response has been um, you know, to this reduction and if you know, everyone's got a budget, mm -hmm. but um, if they will, you know, if there was any other opportunities, I'd hate to see any opportunities for our kids be eliminated Absolutely. due to budget reductions from the state, but um, I'm glad that we're following up with them. At right. some point, if we get an update on that, it'd be really important to me. It's a very positive uh, phone conference I had with them about a month and a half ago or so. Okay. Very open to looking at other ways of serving our district. What, what is the reduction of that, just sort of of that grade five? Uh, field trip just so I can the dollar it. amount mm -hmm. I believe and I'll look it up while Lisa's talking about it I believe it's around 50,000 okay it's pretty okay. I'll try to find it. thank you and please chime in anyone if you have questions I know it's not very uh, cool in here 
And so maybe that's good that we're moving uh, right I along. Thought just, and, and, I thought it was just me. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm not the only one contributing to making it hotter with okay. all my breath. So I'll stop. <laughs> and right. continue. Yeah. <laughs> all right. OPU 924 supports our unified arts instruction, including art, music, and physical education. Reductions were identified through day-to-day -day operational efficiencies and professional development. It is important to note, however, that the K-12 curriculum and teaching and learning OPUs can also support unified arts as needed. And Betty is smiling. <laughs> OPU 927 supports our district's libraries. Now, we will delay our library refresh mm -hmm. and process and purchases of additional makerspace equipment until district finances kind of stabilize. Nine twenty eight is textbooks. It's our district textbook budget, and we will not have an adoption of a new textbook this year. Additionally, this OPU has supported a series of one-time purchases that are not necessary for next year. The remaining balance will allow for some supplemental text to be purchased on an as-needed basis. OPU 933 supports the district's gifted and talented program. Director Colleen Boyle has identified about $30,000 in operational reductions for fiscal year 19. OPU 940 supports College Credits Plus program with various universities that our students attend and earn college credit. As this is a state unfunded mandate, much of the dollars could not be reduced. Mm -hmm. A few thousand dollars in operating costs have been reduced, but other than that, you won't see a great reduction there. OPU 974 supports world language instruction, and reductions include operation costs and some professional development from the supervisor and coordinator. And we move into our Office of Special Education and Student Support Services. Before we move there, is there a, um, because there are a lot of changes in, in realignments, mm -hmm. is there, what is the reduction? I don't know what the reduction our, is from, year old, from 18 to 19 for, for all the services. Are they, our total reduction is 2.7 million. 2.7 million. The very last slide will be a summary okay. so you can see that the, the, the total stuff. <coughs> OPU 913 supports programming for school counselors, school social workers, and the district's positive behavior intervention supports, or we like to call it PBIS initiatives. Minimal reductions included for this day to day operating costs. OPU 917 supports both early childhood education and special needs preschool. A significant reduction is due to the fact that the cost of the partnership with Schoenbaum Family Center at Weiland Park has been reduced from this OPU until further discussion has been had about future programming. So we're currently uh, in conversation with Schoenbaum and looking at the uh, memorandum and changes that might be able to be made to better support our students. OPU 923 serves speech and language services across the district. Minimal reductions are realized by our special education programs and that's including our speech and language services. OPU 934, uh, 932 supports all other special education programs in Columbus City Schools. Any reduction in special education programs are realized through materials and supplies and minimal dollars in other areas. Programming to our students, um, especially our students 
with special needs is at a minimum. Office of Career and Technical Education and Work Workforce Development. Finally, OPU 921 supports career and technical education at two of our career centers and satellite programs at our, at our high schools and programming at our middle schools. Minimum reductions to this OPU are found through materials and supplies. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the overall budget for academic services includes a 2.7 million in reduction as identified through the reduction process from the winter months. Last year, our budget was 14,319,408. For fiscal year 19, we are requesting 11,662,890.36. And we'll work to ensure that the, expended, that the experiences for our students are not influenced by any of these reductions. Uh, board member Peretti, you spoke about programming for our students, mm -hmm. and we want to continue that programming for our students. So those are uh, continuous conversations with some of our partners mm -hmm. on how we may look at things differently, because of all, all of our partners have budgets, so they really understand, and they are committed to Columbus City Schools in helping us get through this period of financial instability. Thank you. You'll notice that various offices request fluctuate from one year to another due to the fact that we have aligned OPUs in the office as reflected in our organizational chart. It would be easy to say that based on this slide we have reduced or our special education budget, but that's not the case. Know that I know I can OPU, which is aligned with special education in FY19, has been moved to academic services school leadership. So we've just moved that, mm -hmm. those costs over from special ed. And that concludes the presentation okay. of the appropriation request for the Department of Academic Student Support Services. Do we have any other further questions on that? Again, I really want to thank, you know, the team, our staff. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we're kind of, you know, it was a tough year uh, trying to identify things, shifting dollars from place to place. No one wants to make any cuts, all of these services are, are vital uh, yeah, for our students and uh, you know I just thank you for being innovative and being thoughtful uh, going through this process and keeping our kids uh, at the forefront of this conversation um, and getting us through these tough times so we'll have better times uh, absolutely so thank you very much Do we and, have any? and thank you for this opportunity but I, I have to recognize my team because they actually did the hard work and met and blood, sweat, and tears, and then coming back, and we're saying, no, we still haven't identified the 2.7, but we came together as a team, and I thank all of you, and David, I thank you for the great work that you've done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions at all from anyone? No? Okay. All right, you guys made it easy. Got out of this hot room. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. Afternoon, everyone. Uh, can I get started? Yeah, absolutely. All right. My name is Maurice Odom, uh, Chief Operating Officer for Business Operation. Thank you for the opportunity to go over our budget today. Before I get started, I, I would say. Um, we did have an issue with our AC today. It's uh, been repaired, so it's trying to cool the building now. So, we'll well, come back again. So, okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, I didn't think we had so, it. It's, it's, it's cooling. So. <laughs> so, in business operation, uh, we, we truly believe that our, our responsibility is, um, we believe we are educators, and we believe our responsibility mm -hmm. is also to help youngsters get across the stage. By that, in business operation, we're committed to ensuring students' futures are transformed to 21st century learning environments. And one of the things we're trying to do over the next five years is to uh, restart the district facilities master plan. That means our planning, design, and construction phase. Mm -hmm. Continue expansion of technology capacity for students, unified communication tools, and our maintenance and repair of district facilities. That, that's what we want to focus on, on those items. 
with that being said, in, in the business operation, um, we have 11 different offices, uh, which consist of in those offices, we have 18 operating units. And so the budget we're going to review today is those 18 operating units that we have that encompass business and operations. The first one we have is, is 936, which is our capital improvement budget. You will notice a reduction from 311,000 um, down to 900,000, 900, I mean 9,000. However, the reason why that reduction is many of those dollars, as we looked at uh, aligning and right sizing our, our budgets, we were actually moving those, the bulk of those capital improvement dollars over to another funding source. And so that's why you see that number reduced there, which means we're moving over to the capital side. It's one of the things we talk about doing the budget reductions. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you, th this is to cover small incidentals that you would see that happens out of general funding. So those were all the small little reductions that we moved over to, what we would fund was it, the sale of buildings fund? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next one is 943, and I apologize, mine is not as, as informative as op uh, academic services, but it's pretty straightforward in operations. This is uh, the budget I oversee, the Chief Operating Officer budget, very small budget, 62,000. Um, this budget is really to help support um, the operations of operations, uh, my division, those 11 divisions. We look at this to, you know, incidentals within the uh, office of uh, Chief Operating Officer office, but also if there's any training, um, any um, uh, our, uh, conferences that we need to go to, we have budget dollars there for that purpose there. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's not a really large budget. So that's what that purpose is. And then also, if there's any things, I'm the, actually the building manager here for, a bit administrator for this particular building. So if there's other incidentals come up, I'll try to, I'll try to use this if it falls within that category. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next one, 944 is our information technology. Uh, information technology budget, um, you'll, you'll see a reduction in that budget of uh, $1.2 million. Uh, that reduction for several reasons. One is we, when we looked at some of the ki some capital items that we could move over and look at our PI, you know, the PI side, we did that. But the other thing is um, our leader in the information technology was able to also write some very good specs, get some good bids out. So moving in this year in some of our contracts, we're able to get the price to stay static. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we're not having an increase, so therefore we're able to do a reduction and still meet uh, those things that we're trying to do, continue to uh, look at offering um, improved technologies to our students, and, you know, look at our minimum refresh to our data. So we're looking at all those. We still be able to provide those services um, that's needed. One of the things in this general fund we won't be doing this year as frequent as we did in the past is refreshing uh, like our Chromebooks. We're going to move that to the capital side. And so that's some of the things we're looking to do that as well. But right now in our in the district, we have approximately 20,000 Chromebooks within the district as well. So. Well, again, just to reiterate what I said earlier, just thank you again. I know we're still going through the presentation, but I know that that was a, you know, I really appreciate all the work that you guys put into shifting those dollars and trying to minimize the impact on our classroom. Thank well, you. I'd like to give credit where credit due, but it's been a team effort with That's Mr. Right. Bihork and his team. It's been very uh, lead and helping us with that, so we appreciate that. Thank you. I cringe every time you say it because I believe in giving credit where credit is due. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one is, uh, is operating unit 945. Um, this is also part of IT, but it's network and telecommunication. This part of the budget is the budget that is for more of a telephone um, and all, the, all those other things outside yeah. of the necessary IT. Um, you see a slight reduction in this budget, $348,000. Um, but this budget actually covers um, uh, you know, what we call UPS, universal power supply batteries mm -hmm. um, that we need to replace in our uh, data centers. We not only have them in our data center, like we, have, we also have them in, in our schools as well as in some of our um, technology closet. So that's what this covers that, as well as uh, when we increase our bandwidth. And what was the reduction? 348,000. Did it get shifted, or was it just straight up reduction? No, this is, these are all of ours reductions. Okay. We, we have no shifting with us. Okay. Um, it's all reduction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and if I could just pause there, because I meant to tell you this earlier, so, but you'll sit at the end. Of our reduction in the business and operation, uh, we have a $2.8 million reduction, mm -hmm. which is about a 5.84% reduction over last year. Uh, our next one is, is, is transportation services. Um, th this particular budget uh, is a reduction of $1.6 million. Um, one of the things you see in this budget, uh, this is part of some of our budget reduction that we had. Uh, there's a couple areas we looked at of reducing some dollars out of our COTA passes, mm -hmm. as well as reducing the dollars that we provided for our power services. 
Um, that goes in hand in hand with the academic service side of the house, but it's a program that we, as an organization, realign that we can do internal. Mm -hmm. And so by doing that, we're able to re realign and reschedule our, our transportation rally to be able to incorporate that, uh, transporting those students to uh, operational success or instead of going to piles or whatever program we take them to, mm -hmm. opposed to using uh, additional outsourced services, if you will. And so that's how we're able to have that savings in transportation with that. So. Mm -hmm. I may be missing something. What's the uh, big increase from 17 to 18 budget? And I see it's going back down, but I don't really understand. Well, um, one of the things with the uh, 17 um, and the 18 budget, we uh, added dollars because one of the things we looked at as well is how could we do business differently. It, over time, in transportation, nationally, there's a, there's a transportation shortage. And so we was looking at ways of being creative of how we could work with other vendors, looking at creative ways. If we can have a vendor who would hire staff and train them, have them ready to go, so we budget dollars in that, to that, not know what that dollar would look like, and trying to be on the cutting edge nationally. And we looked at a vendor that didn't work very well. So what we did this year, um, in 18 also, we, at, we looked at if we took <coughs> X number of routes and earmarked 25 routes to a, a vendor would need it, mm -hmm. up to 25, so we can offset our routes and then we also, with our uh, staff and then working on our call-out rates with our staff to improve that, it, it stops on having to double up routes and having buses not covered. So it's a, it's a mixture of that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I have a quick question, Joe. And it's, it's related. And it's just, it just got my gears going. I know people cringe when board members do that. Uh, but what's going on with the Smart City Grant uh, when it comes to what the City of Columbus is doing and how have they been sort of collaborating with us? You know, I know we, we, we talked about, you know, we had OPSI come in the other day and we were talking about <coughs> transporting students and, you know, buses transport more human beings in the history of the world than anything else. And, you know, I'm just hoping that we're still having that dialogue with the City of Columbus. We're part of their teams. We get an, an um, update. Right now with the Smart City Grant, as you know, they're still in that uh, infant, uh, startup stage. Yeah, and, right, and, and one of the things, but we stay in contact and we're able to speak with them. Um, they're looking at more of um, electric vehicles uh, for service vehicles, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's been discussion that, uh, about electric buses, and we have discussions. But as of now, uh, electric buses have not been have, have not been approved in Ohio. We actually did a it was a host site last June, July, uh, for Smart City Columbus, mm -hmm. where they actually brought a uh, electric bus down, and vendors and, and actually other schools came to look at it here. So we're start constantly in dialogue. The challenge. And we're working through and always looking at with the, with the uh, moving towards uh, direction we're going. Uh, is, is for us the infrastructure. Yeah. We, we don't have that in place when you move towards it. So we're always constantly looking how can we do that. Mm -hmm. The other challenge is in, in many of the electrical buses out there, I know it's constantly improving, is the mileage. Many of times they may only cover just say 75 miles. Many of our routes may be over 75 yeah. miles. So we're working with that. But one of the things we have put on the table, I know Mr. Magaro when we spoke was talking about one of the, the conversations even the smart city was about um, having triggers on lights uh, for the city buses so when they go through it doesn't it's not uh, slowed up by the traffic light okay so we asked the question if you're going to do that how could we as a district pick it back on? absolutely and so again but again i think they're very open it's, mm -hmm. it's just um, it's many different moving parts but we keep definitely abreast of that okay mm -hmm. But it's constantly evolving. But they do have a timeline. Are they sticking to that with some deliverables and some? Yeah, they've been having deliverables. The de deliverables they have at this point is really more, for example, like uh, moving towards uh, electric vehicles for your service vehicles. Yeah. The challenge is us. Many of those electric vehicles may run. You get 20 miles an hour. Yeah. But we couldn't use those because our trucks are going all over the city. Mm -hmm. The challenge with that is also the beauty of some of the um, different companies around town. They, in some cases, have infrastructure already for the fueling stations. Mm -hmm. um, I think the city of Columbus have them in some of the parking garages already. Mm -hmm. And so we couldn't get a bus in a parking garage. Yeah. So again, we're always looking at ways we can make it more effective we, uh, and how could we move towards that, that platform. Uh, the, the one challenge right now, and it's just something very simple, is also as we move to those platforms, it's a cost that's not covered by the grant, meaning that we have to uh, change our infrastructure via garages, mm -hmm. how we service the, the, the uh, vehicles, mm -hmm. and that's a challenge. I mean, just one example, uh, last I checked to change, replace a battery on electric vehicles about $50,000. Oh. So when you're talking about we have a fleet of buses, 846 buses. Adds up you, quick. Yeah, so it's just, again, we're keeping our ears on it, but again, it's, it's, it's evolving. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This next one, 948 is our fleet service. Uh, fleet services, um, 
is again maintaining our buses. Uh, it went up 0.9%. Uh, um, one of the things in the fleet services, um, again, we, we have a fleet that's aging, uh, and we're looking at ways through the PI how we can in, improve that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we look at our fleet service, uh, that's why you, it's not a large increase, but we look at creative ways of maintaining our buses. And this is for uh, things that sometimes you can't plan for. You can't plan for if someone will run in the back of a bus uh, or those type of things. Hopefully mm -hmm. they don't happen frequently, but time to time it happens. Mm -hmm. And so again, this, this budget is to, to maintain a body of a bus, the mechanic work of a bus, and just make sure our bus is still on the road. And I, and I like to say public, our fleet team, do, they do a great job for such a small department, but they do a great job of making sure our buses stay on the road and, and for the safety of our students. 949 is our Builders and Grounds. And our Builders and Grounds department, um, it consists of 949 as well as 950, the next one. The Buildings and Grounds here, this, is, this budget here is solely uh, for the maintaining maintenance of the building. Mm -hmm. um, you would see we had a two point, almost a 3% increase uh, moving from 18 to 19. And uh, this particular budget covers the day-to-day -day operation, but also we're looking at ways and the reduction in building systems breakdowns. That's our goal. And, and how do we do that? And then one of the things we, we're looking at, one of the things we moved, you know, last year, we're still evolving, we, we changed our uh, work order system. Mm -hmm. We went to what we call a famous work order system, and, 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 and we evolved it even more to be more effective and efficient from going to the system to giving our technicians in, in the field uh, technology so they can communicate and follow work orders to tracking the dollar amount spent to it, to doing the reports, and now we're looking at that to evolve, to help us operationally say, okay, well, not that we haven't been doing this, but doing it more effective and efficient. What dollars are we putting in this equipment? Is it time to replace the equipment? What is the life cycle of it? So again, that's what this budget covers, our buildings around. Now, I know half our buildings are either renovated or replaced, and even some of those that have been renovated or replaced are starting to get old as well, so 10 plus years, and some of the, um, some buildings that have just been replaced. Are we gonna continue to see an increase in this budget as that other half of our buildings uh, continue to age? Is this something that kind of correlates with that? Well, uh, you said will we continue to see increase? Yeah. We hope to because again, mm -hmm. even at this budget rate, when you look at uh, cost per square foot, or you look at cost per student, mm -hmm. the budget is really below market value, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, but again, uh, we, we actually uh, manage it and use resources. The beauty of this, this, this budget here is not even close. I think when we did our, our first budget, uh, really uh, iteration back where we had don't think of dollars a couple years ago I think the building and ground budget was about 10 million dollars um, just the acts now the beauty of it is I, I like to say publicly though this is the general fund budget mm -hmm. we do have some dollars from the PI side mm -hmm. where it also touches buildings and grounds we can yeah. also start addressing some of these issues as well thank you mm -hmm. 950 is our environmental health budget um, very small budget uh, it's um, 774,000, it's an increase of 2%. This budget covers uh, compliance issues, it covers um, um, like asbestos removal training, it covers anything that deals with from environment and health safety compliance issues. So that's what this budget here covers there. Um, 951 is our custodial budget. Um, that's custodial services. Um, increased 2%, um, $2.1 million. But this, this, this custodial service budget, it, it, this budget encompasses and covering the entire district. It's all the budget, but it also covers our, our paper and plastic items. Um, it also covers if we need any, we have to manage to get any type of equipment. This budget covers our waste removal. Um, also, it covers any of our recycling. So this encompasses everything that we do within custodial services. Uh, 952 is our utility budget. Real quick, what, yes, what, drove, what drove the 17 to 18 to 19? It looks like 18 19 are pretty similar, but we're seeing a, well, we're roughly a $500,000 increase, which is a sizable part of the well, budget. Part, part of the issue is um, the inflation. Yeah. Uh, uh, paper supplies also uh -huh. um, haven't come from storage service. It, it was underfunded, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but there's um, when you start looking at the chemicals and looking at the paper supplies, it's just increases from that. Okay. Um, so it's really now staying consistent. Yeah. The, the other thing to keep in mind too is very important to point out: um, for eight years in custodial, we had a partnership with Solid Waste Authority, mm -hmm. and our, uh, our recycling was at no cost. Um, in eighteen, Solid Waste Authority it did this when the agreement ends, so then we had to go out for bid for recycling, and so now we pay for recycling. 
Oh. Mm -hmm. Are they willing to well, yes, again, they just write nice partnership again with the district? Well, I mean, <laughs> we, we had a long run uh -huh. um, at, at no cost. And, and actually, the partnership, when it initially started, is a little history. Uh, it was when the city was trying to increase recycling. Uh -huh. And then, remember, they went to the curbside, mm -hmm. blue cans and those blue bags. Yeah. Well, the partnership that we, we had was um, probably, I think, at the time, was the only one in the country um, where they, at no cost, would put containers and do recycling in our school. But also, at certain times of the day, recycling was open to the public. And then as the time revolved with the city, now they're back to curbside recycling at homes. Uh, it didn't fit their model anymore. We're yeah. still constantly in conversation. I will say yeah. they're still good partners with us. Um, they helped us when we looked to go out and look. Um, there's consortiums out there to try to get better pricing, but what we found uh, for us as a district, we actually get better pricing when we bid than we ever go to the consortium. But we start to constantly stay in contact with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. 952 utilities, again, it's our utility budget, which covers a gas, water, and electric. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the inflation of it, yeah. but again, uh, we, we go through a consortium, mm -hmm. get it from a direct sale. Mm -hmm. 953 is our purchasing budget. Um, slight reduction in that particular budget uh, from FY18, but again, we still, our goal is to try to, again, move forward of. Um, yeah. As always in person, we're trying to how we figure out how we can save the district dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at how we can manage things differently for us uh, being more streamlined in RFPs. Mm -hmm. Last year, uh, I think it's the year before we started and changed our platform and went to um, a public purchasing uh, bidding process mm -hmm. where vendors, vendors can go online, we can place our bids online. And one of the challenges we had was vendors were stating, well, I have to have insurance up front. This allows them to bid and then once to get the bid to be able to provide insurance. And so again, um, we was able to do some reduction also by managing. Was I supposed to be doing that? No, I got you. Apologize. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Um, we um, was able to also to manage our copier. We have in the copy agreement, and we able to uh, uptime. It's not uptime. We get re um, kickbacks in, in that as well. Or rebates. I don't have to use the word kickback. Rebates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nine fifty four is our printing and duplicating budget. Uh, I must tell you, 953, 954, 5, 955, 956 are four different call centers, um, <coughs> but all of those fall within the realm of the purchasing department itself. Mm -hmm. That's managed through that department. Uh, printing and duplicating, uh, very modest, $197,000 budget. But this department, I will say, with that budget, they do a lot for the district. They do a lot of our printing in-house, in mm -hmm. where we don't have to go out to different uh, vendors out there. And uh, one of the things um, is maintaining. Last year, we were able to um, upgrade some equipment. And so moving forward, we hope to be able to get more internal business and continue to reduce savings for the district. Mm -hmm. 955 is our warehouse um, department. Uh, the tiers reduction there, we had continued to look at ways to scan, um, um, went to a scanning system <coughs> several years ago. We we're always looking to uh, improve that. But this particular budget uh, managed the warehouse where we um, warehouse some supplies. Um, but we don't warehouse a lot of item supplies. We do a really a just-in-time delivery, uh, as most people are doing, but we have some items that we do still have to keep internally. So mm -hmm. uh, this is to manage that particular department. Mm -hmm. 956 is, uh, again, our delivery service logistics. Um, this department is the department to do all deliveries to the school. This department here consists of uh, not only delivering supplies, items to school, we also do food. Uh, from delivering for food service. Mm -hmm. And one of the things in this department we look at, we also are responsible for when we have inner district moves, this department takes care of moves as well. So this budget here is uh, to m help maintain that particular department, but also looking at ways to um, get upgrades and two well dollars and type sure. of equipment to make the job more effective and efficient. So these are all general revenue funds in 956? Yes, sir. And I know we just, you know, I know we have a lot of other things. We have a lot of deferred maintenance. We have a lot of other needs. Um, and, and again, I would assume that's why replacing the aging fleet was, was done through general revenue funds, not capital at, funds. At the time, we, we, I left it here because our goal is to move it over to the PI that we did here some, yeah. for our entire fleet, <coughs> vehicle fleet. Uh -huh. But I left it here because, again, there are some needs yeah. and it should we need to. I'm not saying that's our first goal, mm -hmm. to move in that direction. However, I, didn't, I wanted to be transparent. And so again, our, our ideal is to move from the PI to do it on the PI, and we do have some dollars earmarked okay. for all fleets, okay. not just necessary for an aging truck fleet. Because we not only have the delivery truck, to, as I call it, the refrigeration trucks, we have our um, maintenance trucks, we have, mm -hmm. and then the district vehicles, so it's, it's, it's an aging fleet. 
Now, I always rig I just, just for, well, these two guys, everyone else knows, <laughs> and Jody down there. Um, you know, you know, we did ask for dollars, as you know, through the levy and the permanent improvement, but there is much more need, uh, as you'll see next week in capital. Uh, you know, we, it's very much underfunded of everything that we really, really do need. Um, you can just only ask for so much from the voters at once. Um, and you have to be safe about those sort of things. Uh, it'd be nice to put up, get everything you need up in one fell swoop, but unfortunately it's not how public education is funded and that's not the reality of it. But I, I do kind of refer to that a lot, but I do want to uh, make sure folks know we still have a lot of need in this district. So, thank you. Safety to Security 958, this was a budget we looked at uh, when we were looking at budget reductions of, mm -hmm. uh, of potential ways to reduce, mm -hmm. uh, made an uh, organizational decision. Mm -hmm. We had, had the SROs on the table, uh, listened to our community yeah. and, and needs. We, we put it back on. So the, the increase, um, it's, uh, it's really part of the, uh, the contract increases. Mm -hmm. There were potential. So that's what that was to cover. But also, we, we have dollars as well. Um, in there, we added a few dollars, for example. In some of our schools, we, we added uh, what we call lobby guards. Um, to our, uh, mm -hmm. for safety reasons, and if we need to also add additional, so we have some places we can still look at different ways as well. There's also other things as we know may come up, so we have a few dollars we, we added to. We're sharing costs with the City of Columbus Division of Police. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nine six is our human resource budget. Um, it, it's it's just a budget again manages uh, and human resource department. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular budget, you see a slight reduction. Um, part of the reason of the reduction is um, uh, we went to NILGOV and, and we have to also maintain uh, services so I uh, was able to get a reduction because we're already in the program so that's why you see the slight reduction. But we, what was that just real quick for historical context uh, from 17 to 18 and again it's quite a, it's a small amount of money compared to our budget but it is a big jump. What was the behavior behind that? Well, we were also, during that particular period of time, we was moving to um, digital filing. Okay. And so we had to budget for that. And also, mm -hmm. we was looking to also move to um, going from a paper system of uh, applications to uh, online system of NeoGov. Mm -hmm. So we had to budget for that as well. Those are some highlight areas of it. Yeah. 962, um, this budget stays static. This is just the employee relations teachers uh, professional development budget is just mm -hmm. housed out of uh, the human resource department. Oh, it's contractually negotiated as well. And it's, it's Mr. Gooding just says contractually okay. negotiated as well. So. The last budget that we have in, in our department is our outreach budget. Mm -hmm. um, this particular budget is uh, reduced 15, uh, to 40000 uh, a little less than $14,000 reduction. Um, one of the things I just want to point out, what you'll notice from 17, 18, it went up, and then 19. This particular budget, you know, one of the things that, as a district we have a goal, LED participation, our aspirational goal is of 20% 20, 20 um, participation. Uh, this budget here used to, it's only about $2,500. The district uh, had put dollars here because one of the things we look to do um, to move towards the electronic uh, LED system of tracking and be able to communicate with our vendors, uh, we started, we implemented that in a part of implementing that now. Mm -hmm. uh, we put an RFP out last year, and now the reason why we have to re re do the reduction, and FY18 was able to purchase the system, and the, the uh, yearly cost, we was able to reduce that cost. Now we don't have to purchase, we just the, the, uh, pay for the service. And so that's why you see the reduction of this year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So when you look at our budget again, just to recap, um, in, bu in business operations, we have 11 offices, 18 different operating units. Of that 18 different operating units, um, we have a budget X of $45.5 million. Mm -hmm. You can compare that to last year's budget, it's about a $2.8 million reduction or 5.84% reduction. That's our building operations. Well, do we have any questions? Mr. Oldham right now? Any other? Uh, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Appreciate sir. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to present our accountability budget for the next school year. So you may not know this, but the Department of, other, of Accountability and Other Support Services 
actually incorporates six different divisions. So we hold the Division of Testing and Program Evaluation, the Division of Central Enrollment, the Division of Alternative Programming, Division of the Registrar, Division of School Choice, and the Division of Information Management, which includes our Student Information Management System, Infinite Campus, as well as our EMIS team, which is our state reporting team. Department of Accountability has some specific goals of which um, have been noted with regard to our five-year plan. One of them that I'm very, very proud of is that we have changed our whole school choice process and we have had a great reduction in paper. So that has actually decreased our budget as far as paper goes. So we have a totally online system that we were able to develop in cooperation with our application development team over at the Kingswood Data Center. It is uh, known in the United States as the first of its kind, and we're very, very proud that we have a totally online system. It is also supported by our central enrollment team that allows for parents that maybe don't have access to come into our center and do online applications as well. So our first OPU is 946, and I just want to share with you mm -hmm. that this OPU handles our support of our formative assessment, which is known as NWEA MAP, or the Northwest Education Association's Measures of Academic Progress. Mm -hmm. And this allows us to have a baseline data mark for all of our students in the Columbus City Schools, allows us to do both boy, beginning of the year, moy, middle of the year, and oy, end of the year assessments. This allows us to get a baseline so that we can actually inform and improve our instruction. Let me ask a quick question. I know this yes, is one of those, um, this is sort of some of those other metrics that we use outside of what the state sees. Do all school districts have, this, have all these uh, different touch points through the year? So, Board Member Preddy, I would say that the majority of our school districts all have a formative assessment, but all do not. Um, okay. Some of our poor school districts, especially down in Benton County, uh -huh. do not have a formative assessment. Um, there, there are many, many pros of having a formative assessment. Uh -huh. So when I first came, we didn't have a formative assessment like uh -huh. this um, four and a half years ago. But one of the things it does is allows me from a 20,000 foot level to evaluate a student's achievement from yeah. the east side as well as the west side as far as the south and the north mm -hmm. and allows for them to all be on the same measurement. Previously, in many school districts, um, especially small ones, have different formative assessments. There's some continuity that pro it provides when you all have the same formative assessment. Okay. It also serves as our alternative for third grade reading guarantees. Mm -hmm. So you may or may not know that, but there's a specific score you have to get on your Ohio State's test, mm -hmm. but this is an alternative as well. And this is actually the reason, or one of the reasons that we picked NWA MAP. Our 967 Community Schools is a budget that's near and dear to my heart. Unfortunately, it's a budget that um, is built for the community schools for educating our students who live within the Columbus City School District, but we have absolutely no control of that. So, my community mean charter. Yes, yes, yeah. sir. 968 OPU is out of district tuition. You might think, well, why in the world would we pay out of district tuition? Well, we're required to pay that by the state of Ohio. So that would be like if a child is foster placed in another mm -hmm. location, but actually um, their residential address is Columbus City mm -hmm. School. So that's just an example for you. 97305 is our central enrollment center. And central enrollment uh, right now, one of the big things they're doing is digitizing student records. So you may or may not know, but we have over 1,100 boxes in our warehouse uh, dating back to the 1800s. And um, we are in the process of digitizing them according to the legal requirements of digitization. Mm -hmm. We do not go back to the 1800s to digitize, but we're, we're following this. So I just wanted to let you know what, what happens with that. What's in those records? What kind of data? Sure, so there's data like attendance data, grades data, credits. Those are the the biggest part of the things that we if are. If you went to school and, and you public school, I'd be able to see. Well, believe it or not, it depends if he graduated or not as to whether or not those <laughs> records are kept. So I'm assuming he graduated from here, but I don't know that. So I want to ask for you. <laughs> you don't want to pull that out. Okay. Okay. 97308 OPU is our alternative education. Some of you may know that we have a wonderful alternative education program called Options for Success. This allows our students that maybe had made a, a mistake, but um, we want them to have a second chance to work on a content academic 
within the confines of a school building and within the confines of certified teachers. So it might not be the same teachers in the same building that they're normally attending, but it's an alternative location that provides them uh, very rich academic programming. We even do an entrepreneurship program out of there called the Quarter Method that we're very proud of. The other thing that's included in alternative programming and why you might look at that big budget number is our virtual credit advancement program. It is called VCAP and those dollars pay for a software called Edmentum Play-Doh um, that we administer and these are for students that want to gain advanced credit as well as remedial coursework so it goes both ways. Does this, or would this include students that learn from home? online yes so we do have like um, our home instruction mm -hmm. um, we have certain students that um, go on this as well as study island so study island as long as we have a, a certain amount that we're using with the Edmund and Plato we get study island free mm -hmm. so it provides tutorials for our K-8 to students as well so a, a student can log on from home and actually use that so here's another board member comments last question <laughs> so have we ever thought about getting into the um, the electronic, uh, the, the at home, uh, the e school game, the e school game to maybe you know to minimize that damage and provide better curriculum and better opportunities for our students than what we have seen in the state of Ohio as of now. Is it okay if I answer it? So yeah. I, I can share with you um, that I have a pretty strong philosophy as far as academic rigor goes. Mm -hmm. um, there are some great online programs, but mm -hmm. I also think that that teacher face-to-face -face component Absolutely. is important. Mm -hmm. And um, in our, we have what do we call our full-time VCAP. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you know that. It's located at Columbus Downtown High School. We have a requirement component in our virtual credit placement program that they have to do at least 15 hours contact hours with a certified teacher per week but they can do all the rest of their academics at home yeah. and we actually allow that right now it's in Columbus Downtown High School room 119 feel free to stop by and see that 119 you got yeah. it down <laughs> and, and, and see what it's all about um, we did have when our ECAT students just recently um, were displaced, mm -hmm. we did have some kids that wanted to do completely online, but you may remember that some of ECAT's difficulties is because they didn't have accountability. Absolutely. We believe in a very strict accountability for our students and I want to make sure that my eyes can see that Dominic Peretti is really doing that work. Yeah, I guess my, my question is more or less around, you know, we know there's going to be a, a segment of the population that is going to want to do this, whether or not they see the value in having that face-to-face -face. and quite frankly the record that we've seen from community charter schools even the online ones has been very poor um, and me as a board member always thinking about uh, our resources and how much goes out of the district every year uh, it just gets me thinking oh well you know why don't we provide a more fulsome better alternative uh, to the ECOTS why don't we do it more, but it seems like we are doing some of that. But it's just we are, but not off totally, the top of my head, sort of question. Totally. So, so Stan yeah. and I cringe every time we see those numbers for for <laughs> our community schools. Our last W is 97310 Information Management. This is our student information management system called Infinite Campus. Mm -hmm. The great thing about Infinite Campus is we have total support for Parent Portal now. Mm -hmm. So our parents can look at their students' attendance, their students' grades in real time. They can check out all of their assessments, their Ohio State tests, and so forth and so on. So it's a great thing. The last thing I'd like to highlight mm -hmm. with regard to information management is the onset of our monitoring daily quality uh, tool called Certify. Uh, brought to us through Certica Solutions, and we actually run on a nightly basis um, over a hundred rules that look at our data quality. So for things such as, does this child have a schedule? Does this child have any gaps in their schedule? Um, does this child have an IEP that's overdue? So we actually have streamlined this so that every person that's in charge of a building or of a program gets an automatic email sent to their email between 6 and 9 in the morning giving them the errors. So it's not a problem when we have an error because all we have to do is correct it. Um, so this is going to immensely help our end of the year reporting through EMAS and both our internal auditor and our auditor of state love the fact that we're doing daily monitoring. So I thank them for the idea. And just in, in summary, our accountability um, budget summary, please note that while you look at $206 million right now, um, it sounds like a really large amount of money, but please note that 98.9% .9 of that budget is required by state law. 
So it's, it's, kind, of, uh, it's kind of deceiving. Um, the recommended non-personnel reductions that we've made are $14,390, and those are through the Division of Program Evaluation and Testing and through our Division of the Registrar. Specifically, we don't need to store records in Coleman Solutions off-site um, anymore. We have a renovated central enrollment center, and the last budget reduction was due to testing and our formative assessment. You might think, well, you really want formative assessment. Why are you reducing it? The good thing is we've had formative assessment now for three solid years, and we've built capacity so we can actually reduce the amount of professional development we're giving and just mm -hmm. give it to the new people mm -hmm. instead of giving it to everyone. So that concludes my presentation on accountability. Are there any questions? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And I think we are on our last one right now. The superintendent. Yeah. And we we covered the majority covered of the some of this before, right? Yeah. And, and Mr. Werner was yep. unavailable, so we were just so finishing up with the communication space. space. Okay. But I like to think of a small but impactful part of the Office of Superintendent uh, budget. Um, in 2015, the district created the position of the Executive Director of Strategic Communication to kind of better align, coordinate, and consolidate some of those internal and external communications efforts. And so I think the general fund budget, um, this, the current one and, and the next one's really kind of help with the investment in that strategic communications <coughs> plan. Um, so that we can better reach, uh, more effectively reach what has been a changing student and, and parent uh, and family demographic, our diverse employee pool, and really kind of the growing community and um, stakeholder universe that we have. Um, so we have a lot of new approaches and new tools that we've invested in. So as we go through, there are four U, um, OPUs that are part of strategic communications. The first um, is more of a legacy OPU. Um, that's the 937 that you see, and that was really associated with uh, the chief communications officer position that the district has left unfilled. So our core communications budget is really um, 938, um, and this is where we have made our largest investments in those targeted communications efforts and new tools, uh, such as our mobile app, which really allows us to reach our audiences rate right where they are. Um, in fact, this weekend, a little bit of news, we will be launching our newly redesigned website. Um, and what is m most impactful for me about this new website is that it is easily ac accessed, whether you're on a desktop, a laptop, a phone, uh, an iPad, because we know our families use a multitude of tools by which to try to access information. And if we're not meeting them where they're at, um, then we're not doing a great job. Um, our next OPU is 939, and this is customer relations, uh, which is our main call center. Uh, this also includes our transportation call center. Um, and this is no longer just a complaint line. One of the changes that we've made is that it's really meant to be a support line. So as questions come in, um, we're not only giving those families who are calling support, but also supporting the principal. So oftentimes that team is looked upon to help mediate whenever there are concerns that come up at a, at a specific school. Um, we also now are in coordination with the uh, with board relation with the um, uh, our relations team that works with the board so that we're helping with constituent calls um, that come in. And then the final OPU in the section is 971, which is our media technology team, uh, which includes the, the video support that you see today. Um, I want to note, so this OPU is probably the one that was most impacted by the personnel cuts um, that were approved by the board. Um, what had been uh, a while back a staff of three is down to a staff of one. And so um, these dollars allow us to support um, some contracted work uh, as we need, um, but then also we've reduced some of the, um, and realigned some of the responsibilities to go back to the school level. Uh, but those are the three parts of communications. And I hope everybody's downloaded the mobile app. If you haven't, <laughs> do so today. Thanks. Oh, yeah. So that uh, concludes all of the department requests over the previous meeting and today. So. Uh, you know, some, not everyone's here, but thank you to the budget team and the budget managers for what they did. This is not an easy task in going through 
the, the, the painstaking process of identifying reductions to address uh, the revenue shortfall, but also retaining what's necessary to deliver the programs that, that Alicia talked about before. We wanted to do reduce as much as we could, but still protect the, the core investment on those programs, and that's it's not easy to do. Um, so I know we're missing our chair at this point, but I guess there are any questions yeah. that the folks Sorry, so sorry. sorry, sorry. As I said, we so should bet. convene and then approve the minutes, too. Absolutely. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have a chance, though, to everyone to look at the minutes? Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion to uh, move the, uh, approve those minutes? Move. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. They're approved. All right. Good. So uh, real quick, though, I do want to just kind of wrap up um, to, just to say thank you to everybody. Um, and um, you know, next week, we have another meeting um, to go over our capital budgets. I'm really looking forward to that conversation. That's new. So unlike this process, you know, this is a process that, you know, it's been going really smooth. Uh, the non-personnel, something's evolved very quickly. Uh, and even how, like, the individual department heads are, are looking at it and, and, and really putting this together. It's been fantastic to see. Um, but this capital budget process, you know, looking at our capital budgets um, is new. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. and. Um, uh, Maurice and his team is working hard and you know really want to get some good solid feedback um, as we move forward with that um, and keep in mind you know capital is one of those things that you can plan for some things but you have to have some flexibility unlike something like with buying software or buying or paying for programs that academic services are going to do through the year there's a lot of unknowns as well uh, when it comes to our capital and as things break down um, but with that I do want to thank everyone for coming in, helping us out, making this process as, as, uh, as uh, fulsome as it has been, um, and just thanks. And if there's any other questions, maybe we could take this right now? No? Okay. Well then, I'm gonna move to adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move. A second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Thank you folks, thanks, I really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah.